South Africa is a good land. South Africa is an amazing country. It was a place to be, the rainbow nation where everybody is, you know. Land that you believe is good land, full of opportunities. You land here and it's now report about the killing, the address, about foreign national. We start getting these fearing testimonies about South Africa. Now you become confused. I was born in the year 1983 in Brazzaville. My early stage was, I think, painful, but lucky I was so small, I can't remember that. Uh, my mom and dad, so they got divorced when I was two weeks baby. I remember my early memories uh, of how my mom was strong and how my mom still up to today, my pillar. She helped me at my metric. She helped me go to the university. So it taught me a lot about, you know, things does not come by themselves but you have to make them happen. One can only unlock that if there is opportunities. And South Africa for me was the opportunity for me to become the man that I have to be for my family. There is always a little bit of Congolese colony in South Africa. They tell you what the country, according to their perception. You know what, this country is this way. Good people are these ones. Violent people are these ones. You be careful about Zulu people. In one side, I start looking at South African as you know, I need to be very careful who am I speaking to. And in the other hand as well, my neighbors were very afraid of me. My neighbor thought that I was a drug dealer. I started with my own business. So I'll go to auction and buy printers because I had like a, an internet cafe. Me buying that and bringing it in my house, my neighbor starts seeing this guy is a drug dealer. <laughs> and I even had my neighbor calling the police on me. Uh, during the night, cars parking, knocking, and I'm like, what's happening? You're open, we are the police, you're open. Start searching, look at the computers, look at the, the printers that I bought. Where did you buy this? How did you get this? Lucky me, I had my receipts. Why that's happened is my neighbors were afraid of me. They didn't know the real person that I was. The same way myself as well, I was afraid of them. Maybe if that barrier was broken, I wouldn't probably be in that situation. At the end, they found out that I was just a normal guy, you know, who was legal, who had his paper in order, I was trying just to make a living. In the years, the late 80s, early 90s, we heard about South Africa a lot. The one word that were resonating a lot in our ears was Soweto. Black people like you and I are suffering in Soweto. Young children cannot make it to school. The thing was, uh, it was an initiative from our president at that time. It was about going to every institution, being work, being school especially. If you have two pens and you gave a spare one, they will collect. If you have two books, three books, you give a spare one. And the big part was giving like, uh, at the time, 50 cents. Giving 50 cents of your money. And that was collected and to send to South Africa. People didn't know actually how um, the other African countries stood for the apartheid. The, how the other African country contributed for the apartheid. So I think it's about sharing experience, sharing experience, sharing stories, listen and search, don't just assume. I'm not the one who come and steal, but I'm the one brother that stood with them and was here with them still. South Africa will always be my second home. I think I owe South Africa a lot. To the person I am today, South Africa contributed. And when I say South Africa, I say about the people. Here I am having a family in South Africa, married, have a daughter who was born in South Africa. Everything that she is or the way she came to life is because South Africa gave it to us. But you ask yourself a question, which world will she be facing if the change cannot be made now? Will she be recognized as a South African because she has that right? Or will she still be looked at as a foreigner?